Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another Parasite Podcast. And today, I have a really, really awesome guest with me, Nick Cagnetti, who is the artist and writer and creator of this amazing book called Pink Lemonade, put out by Oni Press. Just came out in trade paperback, the first six issues you can get right now. I'm going to put a link down below so you guys can go buy it. Please do. And you'll see in this episode why you should go buy it because Nick's an amazing dude. So Nick, say hello to the parasites and tell us a little bit about yourself. How'd you get into comic book art and all that and all the amazing stuff that you, you produce? Hey everybody. Thanks for having me here. Uh, you know, I've, I've loved comics my whole life. So, I mean, it's pretty much how I learned to read, write, draw right there from reading old Spider-Man books. So that's sort of been uh, integral in my, in my whole journey and, uh, discovering this stuff and, uh, drawing and, and making my own books. I think even as far as in pink lemonade, you can probably see a lot of the Spider-Man love pouring through in some, some fun ways. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that because that was one of the reasons I was like, I, I for a while now, I've been wanting to have you on the show. And for that reason alone, I'm like, I can see, cause I've been buying pink lemonade as it's been coming out. Uh, so, so now I'm going to buy the trade just because I want to support and I, I, I love your stuff. So that's next on my list, but I've been buying the book and I'm like, this guy is so talented. Like your, your splash pages are amazing. The colors, everything pops. I, I, I get a, a very big, like Mike Allred and a little bit of Jack Kirby influence probably even a little bit of um, Morrison. I think he did a book called Zenith once. Like there's a couple things in there that I'm like, God, this is like such a cool love letter to things I like, but then also clearly like your imagination just going bonkers. So what is Pink Lemonade for people who don't know? Could you give a brief summary and kind of where this idea came from and how you got it into the hands of Oni Press who is publishing it for you or with you? Yeah, this uh, is... That goes in a lot of different directions there. It's a little hard to sum up sometimes for sure, but I'll do my best. Uh, All right. I'd say that succinctly, the succinct version would be, uh, you know, it's about this lady named Pink Lemonade who's just trying to go out there, do her thing, see new things, make friends, just, just be herself. Uh, but the entertainment world has other plans for her as it tries to, take advantage of her good nature and her identity itself. So she's got to, you know, navigate that whole craziness and, and, and try not to lose who she is through all that. So I, I guess a uh, big thing for me was just sort of trying to look around at the, you know, the entertainment around us that we're so, you know, we're all fans of this sorts of thing. So it was really just like trying to pause it if we, you know, engage with it on, on, on certain levels as much as we, as we should, or if we, you know, we don't sometimes forget to look at things in certain ways. And, um, for, for me, the whole pink lemonade stuff started back when I was in college. Um, uh, I did some comic strips with the character starting out and, uh, that was sort of my whole first exposure to trying to do something myself, just, far as writing and drawing something so I was really nervous but it was a good way to get over that fear pretty much because you're you know you're doing that daily pacing of comic strips it's, it's a good way to figure that sort of thing out and navigate that and um, you know because before that I had done some books with some friends that they had that they had written mm -hmm. and so I was just really trying to get over that fear and uh, the Pink Lemonade comic strips really helped me do that. And then by the end of that, it just sort of came to a natural ending point where, you know, the story that I was building towards was sort of getting too ambitious to, to leave to that format. So I, I felt like it was necessary to jump to back to making full books and do that with the character. So uh, that's sort of how the book started. And then from there, it was really just like, got to make these as as good as I can. I got to make it as, as uh, you know, there was things that was going through my head at the time. Like this is sort of a do or die kind of moment where, you know, I had to really put stuff in there that was sort of difficult to draw and make it look good because I feel like that would be the kind of things that editors would be looking for. You know, just sort of like things like dogs, kids, yeah, uh, indoor scenes or just like mundane things, vehicles, Right. crowd scenes, 
just fill 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 an issue with just as much of that as I could. And uh, after I finished that, it got picked up by a small press publisher called It's Alive, and they mm-hmm. put out the first two issues, 2019, uh, through them. And then after that, things you know sort of went crazy everywhere. And uh, you know, I, I left that publisher during all that craziness, so I. I kept working on the series. I didn't know where it was going to go or anything. So it was really uncertain. And then finally, after a bunch of searching for like two years, a year and a half, uh, finally the Oni stuff happened. Uh, It was really through an editor over there had picked up the original It's Alive version, number one, Pink Lemonade at their local comic shop when that came out so it was really a sort of a thing where things kind of happened for a reason there that's that's awesome well as a former editor myself too i would say like when i was reading especially the first issue which i left an amazon review for you uh because i was like you know what i was like i want to just do a little something extra than you know uh and and say say something about this book and thank you that was you're welcome man because my as i was reading it i actually that's how i am with comics like i can't shut my editor brain off anymore uh so like uh, it's hard to enjoy some comics now because of that reason uh and so like i'm looking through yours and i'm like wait why that's amazing he drew the kitchen and i'm like these people are talking in the kitchen and he didn't do just like a flat blue background or something like he drew the kitchen and then there's this one splash page you did i think in the second issue where you see this girl's bedroom and her toy collection of oj bot and all these things and it's just it's just like, it looks like my room. It's just toys everywhere. And I'm like, how the hell long did it take him to do this? And like you said, cars and and, and kids and, and uh, dogs. And these are things that like for the average, you know, because I read somewhere that this terrified me um, where it was like the average comic book reader spends about five to 10 seconds on a page as they're flipping through. Right. And it's just like breaks your heart because I, I know you know more than anyone how hard it is to make that one page of artwork. And I'm sitting here looking at all these details and I go, most people would not do this amount of work at Marvel or DC. And here you are working for yourself, putting out your own stuff with, and then, you know, going into small publishers and then going to Oni and stuff. It's like, you're treating it like you're, you know, like, like someone should, like someone with passion should, you're doing everything. Like you said, challenging yourself, making the details there. And so I'm reading through this and I'm like, this is mind blowing. The amount of work, like as an editor, I would be so proud. I'd be like, print it. <laughs> I would just look at it and go print it. It's amazing. It's fantastic. So I want to talk about that because the book, when I was reading it, I loved it. I kind of connected a little bit to Pink Lemonade as, as someone, she's a character with a, no real memory of her past. And she's trying to figure things out. She's kind of happy go lucky type, uh, kind of plucky. And I really love all those things about her. And I was like, wow, this is great. And she meets Pam and Linda, this mom and daughter who kind of uh, open her eyes to certain things, buy her, uh, you know, make her mac and cheese dinner, you know, buy, uh, treat her to some pink lemonade where she gets her name from. And it's this really wholesome book that is paced oddly at times for, in, for at least in my opinion, but yet completely makes sense. Like that was one of the things where I'm like reading it and going like, wait, did I miss something or, oh no. And then by the end of the issue, I'm like, I'm completely caught up. I know I, I see what's going on here. And I, I love that. I, like I said, it kind of has like an all red or Zenith kind of approach to things. So besides those guys and me, I don't know if Jack Kirby's an influence of yours, but besides all red and maybe Grant Morrison and stuff, what other influence did you have on making this book or making art in general? Right. Uh, well, I'd say all red definitely is a big influence for sure. Like uh, that was sort of a big game changer moment for me when I sort of dove into the more independent side of comics like i was always aware of guys like mike allred as a kid just mm-hmm. like seeing books like ecstatics coming out always and i'm like <laughs> i love how this looks yeah and uh it wasn't until later that i really dove into stuff like that and really fell in love with it all and uh i i think that sort of changed my whole perspective on things like it was you know, going from strictly, I want to do Spider-Man stuff to, I want to make my own stuff. So that's sort of where that whole transformation came from. It was probably straight from that. But uh, I'd say another big one would be like Steve Rude. I I really enjoyed, you know, when I was real, when I was young, 
recent back issues at the time of a three issue Spider-Man mini series that he drew mm -hmm. called like uh, Spider-Man Lifeline. And yes. uh, it was really beautifully illustrated. Like I see that stuff as like a six year old and I'm just like, whoa, just seeing the flow of everything on the page and how like really, really uh, elegantly it's all like portrayed. That was something that left an impression and something I was trying to go for in my high school days a lot. Um, and then like discovering his books, like, uh, like Nexus is a big one, but uh, the moth was a little mini series that he did that I think was, was pretty underrated. Um, I, I'm a big Kirby fan, big uh, Ditko Ramita fan, but basically all, all the big uh, classics, but um I uh, really like uh, Darwin Cook too. Yeah. The, uh, you know, early early on, there was that uh, Spider-Man's Tangled Web series that Marvel was putting <sighs> out. That was, yeah, it was amazing. And uh, being exposed to, to lots of different creators that weren't typically Spider-Man people at, at that young age was, was something that was I would con continuously go back to because it was like... Uh, that was my gateway, but seeing like Darwin Cook doing Spider-Man, it was just like, this is perfect. And, uh, you know, go go back to more of his work later on then too. Uh, another big one for sure. But um, one that 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 that's a bit off the beaten path for, for me with, with Pink Lemonade would probably be Hugo Pratt, Corto Maltese. Because okay, yeah. I was diving into a lot of that at the time when I was doing like the comic strips and prepping for the, for the series and just sort of that, that adventurous and, and kind of dreamlike quality that those adventures could kind of take. And just the, the beautiful brushwork was, uh, I, that was a, that was a big one for me too. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, I can tell, well now, now hearing you talk to like, uh, and I know you po uh, popped up on other podcasts and stuff. So anyone out there, please follow Nick. I'm going to put a link to his Instagram down below and any other socials he wants me to share. I will down below and just follow this guy. He's amazing. Clearly he loves what he does. And hearing you talk about these guys, cause I fell in love, like as a fan of like, I'm a fan of writers, but I've always been a fan of editors and comics. And that's kind of why I went down that road for a road for a while. And I was a big fan of like guys like Archie Goodwin, um, who also wrote, but he was a great editor and, uh, and Mark Chiarello, who, opened my eyes to a lot of artists, um, in a book he did called solo. Um, and then, uh, and then he also went on to do Wednesday comics. And I think he did, uh, I think Mike Allred drew the Neil Gaiman, um, story in that one, which was, uh, was, uh, Oh, who was it? It was, um, metamorpho metamorpho. And there's this like amazing on the eighth or ninth issue, this amazing spread of, uh, the, the table of elements, uh, <laughs> the periodic table yeah. of elements with little metamorphos going between them. And, and I remember like hearing the artists on that panel at New York comic-con talking about, um, like, uh, like how, cause I, this was when I had my aneurysm. So I wasn't at New York comic-con that year, but DC used to release their pod like release the panels at podcasts so i someone burned them onto a cd for me so i could listen to them and uh, and so i would be listening to them like when i was going through physical therapy because music was always sometimes too intense for me so i would just listen to people talk and i would i'd listen to this panel over and over about wednesday comics about how um you know neil gaiman was like yeah i can't believe he drew this it's amazing and 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 it made me appreciate artists you know when during my restart kind of way probably more than even before on some level, even though I used to draw before, but uh, I feel like the the view I have of artists now is is way different. And so when I'm looking through your stuff, man, I'm like, I see all these little things like Spider-Man influences and, and other, con and I'm like, dude, this guy is, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, Nick, one day you are going to be, you're going to write and draw probably a, like, you know, a Spider-Man blue, or, you know, you're going to do a mini series for Marvel with Spider-Man. I can feel it. I can feel it. I've seen your artwork. I can feel it. Um, and I hope someone at Marvel, you know, finds your work like sooner than later, because, uh, you're a very talented dude. And, uh, and speaking of that talent, some of the characters you have in this book are crazy. Like I love, uh, Bar Barzabelli. Is that how you yes. say it? Barzabelli Bar Jr. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Barzabelli Jr. Is like this like otherworldly creature looking guy. Like he's so awesome. And you have Ron Radical, who's like this, like, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger slash Eddie Brock looking dude. He's got the mullet <laughs> and everything. It's, it's so wild. I'm like, this is so fun. Um, and, uh, 
And then you have OJ bot. And then you had this great conversation in like issue two where you're, you're talking about OJ bot getting a dark gritty reboot <laughs> and the, and Linda's like, it's ruining the brand. And it's like a total fanboy, uh, you know, and fangirl conversation they're having on the couch. And it, this is really fun stuff. And I'm curious, where does the book go from here? You have issue six came out, but it, and, and maybe it's this announcement that you can't talk about yet, but is there, is there more pink lemonade to come? Hmm. Well, I, I wouldn't say uh, in the immediate future there's okay. there's any any new pink lemonade on the on the horizon for me. I the big focus was just to make this initial story as as good as I could get it, and you know I I think that was a, a big thing for me was just to make sure that I told the story that I wanted to tell there, and you know made sure that everything paid off as as well as it could, and. Uh, I think that was a big focus, just to tell something that could be complete and then collect it in the end in a satisfying way. So I'd say that that's just kind of generally how my my approach is 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 tends to go. Okay. Uh, it's uh, I'd say next up, I'd I'd like to try some different things. Um, I'm I'm in the midst of of sketching out the pages for my next project and it's it's going pretty fun so far and i'd like to just try and do as many different kinds of things as i can just for the sake of uh switching things up for myself and keeping things fresh and I, i'd like to do stuff like that but you know I, I can see myself you know sooner rather than later returning to pink lemonade just because the character is so fun to to be in that space with and to to you know draw and, and write and uh i i think uh i already have quite a few ideas for more so <laughs> but th i think that's kind of the way i work too is uh you know i get these ideas in my head and then they just start to sit there and stir around and then eventually they start coming to the surface more and and, and start filling themselves in uh I, I think that's sort of a way things kind of go for me too that's awesome. I mean, that's great. And yeah. And, and that's how I, I, cause I remember um, Dan Harmon used to always say like, you know, when he, writing for him was more like a, like an abusive relationship, he would describe it as sometimes. And, uh, but he was always tell people like, but not everyone's like that. Like maybe Hemingway was like that and other people, but for some people it's an ebb and flow. They're like, they, they kind of like, you sound like you kind of know your immediate limits and you're like, okay, I've told this story. This is great. In order to tell more, I'm going to need to step away for a while and kind of, go do something else to get fresh. And that's how a lot of filmmakers actually think as well, which is, which is awesome. Um, so with that being said, cause I know um, you got an appearance coming up to Comic-Con and uh, I think you're going to the Oni press panel as well. So I just want to plug that real quick before we get into our next part of this episode. Um, what day, if you know the information, like what day is the panel and what, uh, and, and where can people find you there at, while you're at Comic-Con? I believe the panel is Thursday at uh, 11 a.m. To, to noon. Okay. And uh, then I have uh, I have some signings going on through designated times throughout the rest of the show. Cool. Uh, there's some there's some stuff that I can't wait for them to to announce yet that I think they're saving to like special like the last minute here to to announce, but. There's going to be some some cool stuff that's going to be that's going to be uh, there for some people. Oh, awesome. <laughs> well, then everyone out there watching this episode, if it hasn't been announced already uh, by the time this episode goes up, like you should be following Nick anyway, but go follow him so you can see what this news is and whatever it is, man, I'm on board. I'm going to be following you for the rest of your career. As long as I'm alive, I'm going to be uh, a big fan of yours, man. So uh, so and, and I've been seeing your artwork, speaking of uh, stuff that's been popping up because you'll. You will. I don't even know if you sleep. I think you're like me probably on some level. Like, cause I, I'll like, sometimes I'll be up at two in the morning and I'll see you post a picture that you drew of like Spider-Man versus the, the green goblin. And I'm like, what is he doing awake? Like, <laughs> like this guy's brain never shuts down. Yeah. But, like, what's cool is that I've been seeing that artwork in other places now. And it led me to a podcast uh, called the amazing spider talk podcast. And these guys have been around for years. They've been, you know, going through the history of the comic books um, of amazing Spider-Man, just going through the issues and talking about the character. And lately you've been doing artwork for them. That are, I don't know how recent, uh, but I lately that's when I noticed it through your post. Um, and now I'm subscribed and follow to them. So I'll put a link down below. If you guys are Spider-Man fans, follow these guys. Cause Nick does their thumbnail art and then stuff that you can find on their Patreon too, I believe. So 
how did you get involved with those guys and, and what have you done with them so far and, and where can people find that stuff? Is it just Patreon and YouTube or is there other places? Well, uh, the way I got introduced to them was uh, they started their show back around when Superior Spider-Man was coming out fresh at the time. And they were uh, they were called Superior Spider Talk back then. And uh, I, I was following I was following them since like the beginning back then. And uh, after a few years, they, they had like a an open invitation to like do some art for their show and for like the podcast and stuff. So. I think it was 2015. I, I did some art for their show that was like really, uh, you know, it was it was it was me and me in college doing some some art and just on the side. And it was, you know, it was early kind of looking stuff. So uh, they had that in like their early, really early shows for a while, like on YouTube and stuff. And then uh, around 2020, uh, I, I heard from from uh, one of the hosts on there, Dan Gavazdan. Mm -hmm. uh asking if i wanted to come back and, and like do new things for for their show for like because the way they their format had changed in, in in years since and uh they were growing to like cover more of like the history from the beginning and stuff like that so they they, they were bringing me on to illustrate uh you know episode specific things sort of what they were covering at the time and uh they were they were doing like the uh the marv wolfman run on amazing at that time ending mm -hmm. that and going on to like denny o'neill and roger stern so um uh, it was pretty fun because uh you know coming on there at then because some of my earliest memories are before my family had a had a home computer back in the day i would be going over to my grandparents house and they had a computer and i re remember going on to like spider-man fan sites just to <laughs> browse covers and read about the characters and the history and stuff and that, that, that would be like a big early like thing for me just like reading about this stuff and then my mom would take me to the comic shop and i'd be like picking up some issues and i'd be like i just looked at this one on the computer <laughs> there was uh there was a fan site i don't know if anybody remembers this one but it was called like samruby.com hmm. it was it was it was named after like the guy's dogs Okay. And uh, it was just a great resource. Just it doesn't exist anymore, but uh, you could probably find it on like the Internet Archive or something. But it was it was great. And um, yeah, it was, so it's just a nice way to, to sort of express my, uh, you know, my, my love for, for the, the history of the, of the character. And I, I continue to do stuff with them through that. Yeah, I know. I love your the one you did recently, too. I think they just did an episode. I listened to it. Um, couple days ago it was uh it was i think tom defalco and ron friends was on there uh yeah. to get together for the first time on their show and uh and you did this like awesome like splash page thing uh for their thumbnail on it's amazing man it's really cool and i'm glad through you i got turned on to their stuff because they get a, they make a really good show i really like their stuff but uh but yeah so anyway I, so i'm very much entangled with spider-man i love the character but it's funny. People all the time go, why do you do Venom and not Spider-Man? And I'm like, well, I think Venom, you know, I think he's a, he's a great character because he's a lot like Peter in the sense that he's an everyman. And, uh, and that's what I like about him. So curious, uh, what are some of your things? Oh, and by the way, I want to mention in Pink Lemonade, just to give you a little plug here too. You do these cool ads at the end of the issues of like pretend toys of like extreme, you know, radical, you know, uh, extreme toys and everything. And some like Rob Liefeld references. And uh, you one, I think it was like, total radical instead of total recall yeah. so like, I, I i love your little i mean dude you're you're awesome um so since you get influenced by a lot of things like uh but what are some of the reasons you love spider-man and do you have any favorite villains in his rogues whether to draw or just to that you just love in general i uh i always love the character just sort of uh i mean i think the initial thing for like most people like when they're kids is the costume just yeah it's iconic it's a it's 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 amazing design and uh i think just sort of that appealing factor of how colorful it is and how anybody can be under there is sort of that it's that initial pull for for everybody and uh i think that was for me too but then i think the thing that's made me a, a fan for for life was just sort of the you know the the mundane aspects of it that the people side <laughs> I always yeah. like how, how he just sort of had like a kind of regular feeling supporting cast and 
regular characters that he would be surrounded by. And I think that sort of thing was always the most appealing after a while. Uh, I know it's probably the, the cliche answer, but it's the truth for, for me, honestly. And um, I think that was sort of a thing that I tried to keep in mind too for Pink Lemonade, just sort of keeping track of the 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 what's the important stuff here and trying to keep it relatable and, and, and uh, identifiable. I think it, that's the important thing in making people sort of come on board to something is have it be rooted in some identifiable, uh, you know, things for people to latch on to. Uh, so that, that's, that's a big guiding thing. But uh, as far as villains go, uh, you know, Ven Venom's a big one, but uh, I've always, <laughs> always liked the Hobgoblin. Uh, any, 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 any one of them. Uh, yeah, I've, yeah. I've liked the uh, Mysterio too, just for his design and, and, yeah. and sort of stories that he's always able to generate and uh, in the visuals. Uh, those are probably, probably the three of them for me, like my, my favorites. I, I could see you drawing a, a like a Spider-Man Mysterio story because knowing you, you're going to, you're going to be like that person, like, the people who did Wednesday comics with Chiarello and stuff like they, and like what you did with pink lemonade, you challenge yourself. You're like, I need every page to pop. This is my Spider-Man story. I want, so I want to go nuts with it. And I could just see you doing like, here's Mysterio. And then just drawing all kind of wacky, awesome stuff for pages and pages. I could see you being like most writers, since you're a writer and artist, most writers would be like, all right, we'll do like a three page battle. And then, you know, editors would be like, yeah, keep it three pages and do this. You're like, no, 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 man. 12 page battle. I'm going to draw everything. I'm going to draw like a you know, uh, unicorn shooting lasers out like you're doing pink lemonade. Like you're like, I'm going to do, I'm going to put it all in here. Um, yeah, that's, that's really cool. I'm glad you said Mysterio. I, I feel like that character sometimes doesn't get a lot of love. Um, but Venom, yeah, I mean, and I think you, we were talking before the show, you were like, I was like, how do we know each other? Because normally when I bring people on, I kind of, I'm like, oh yeah, this, I, this is how I met them or whatever. And for you, I was really struggling to pinpoint it. And you were saying how like, oh, I watched a couple early Venom vlogs and, and then I followed you or you followed me. And then you saw, you worked at the Lego store and you saw someone come in with a very rare pink lemonade shirt that I only did one run of. And you tagged me in it. You're like, oh my God, I saw a pink lemonade shirt. And uh, yeah, it's like, I'm, yeah, that's how I am on social media. I pretty much just scroll through the first 10 posts I see. And, and then I like them all. And then, uh, but I process it, you know, and I try to remember people um, the best I can. And so when I saw that shirt, I flipped out and I'm glad we met each other because as, as long as it took me to finally ask you to be on this show, uh, it was worth the wait because I get to talk to you about all this amazing stuff that you've now accomplished in the time from then till now. Uh, so what dream things would you like to, cause that's what your book Pink Lemonade is about. She's this big dreamer. So what are some of your dreams besides maybe some of the obvious ones like Spider-Man stuff? Like what are some things that you would hope to work on before your career is over one day? Well, I mean, just the, the big thing for me is I'm just, you know, happy to, to, to do this sort of thing. Like it was something that I so that I've always wanted to do. So uh, I'm, I'm just really grateful to be in a spot where I got a book out there now and people are reading it. People are, have, been telling me they've been enjoying it it's just really really pleasant after you know there's been many times where you know you work on this stuff you're not sure if it's going to get out there or if people are going to see it and uh it, it's it can be hard at times going through that kind of stuff but i, I think uh i'm just really grateful that that this stuff is out there and i hope that just being able to continue making uh books that i'm that i'm you know passionate about uh, different kinds of books and uh, you know I mean as far as things that I'd like to do out there um, I I, I, I kind of really like to do like an old school Tomb Raider book just like cool just embracing the the, the 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 you know like trying to get like the gameplay loop into like a book and just try and like have fun with that on the page and, and try and you know play with those kinds of things with layouts and stuff would be really fun uh, and just sort of explore like the 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 kind of I iconic like character like like just in the space like this is how everybody sees his character and just like play with that. I feel like jumping off of Pink Lemonade. There's some there's some things there that that uh, just stand out to me in my head that you could do. But um, another one would probably be a, a Spawn, honestly. 
<laughs> um, that's a... I, I uh, you know, my I think my art kind of uh, not expectedly like the kind of thing that you'd think of with Spawn, really. But like uh, after doing, I did a short story with Chris Condon on a on an anthology book that Oni just put out called Zeno. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a story in there that I did with him that it gets really gnarly by the end of it. And really just like going from pink lemonade to that, it was really fun to do something just totally different and totally more like off the wall violent. But, uh, you know, I, I, I think doing like a book like Spawn would be really fun or even just like a cover. Uh, I've always liked that character and I, I, I love me some, some, some like crazy nineties ed edgy books. <laughs> Awesome. I, that's, I didn't expect you to say spawn, but I'm thrilled because, because yeah, I, I, although I can't picture it, I, I haven't read Zeno yet. So, um, but that's cool that you, again, you see an opportunity to do something different and challenge yourself, but also like do something that you're passionate about. Uh, so McFarland, Hey man, like you got a lot of spawn books out there. What's one more? Let, let Nick do something with spawn. That'd be why I would love to see a, a, a spawn book with with like that contrast of like a spawn in the alley is like really dark. And then there's like this threat he's fighting. That's very colorful. Like that oh. would be, that would be wild to see. Yeah, well, yeah. He, he lives here, you know, in Arizona, Todd. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, back when I was in college through a friend of a friend, we managed to, to go up to their office at McFarland toys. And I showed them some pages of what I was working on at the time, which was a uh, spawn influence book and uh he, he he looked at a bunch of the pages and, and gave me some some nice advice and like told me to uh to 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 play with my line weight variations more and then i immediately took that to heart and and, and next page i'm like getting more getting more brushes out and uh it was, that was really cool that's awesome to get feedback from uh, you know someone on that level is is amazing and uh, yeah, and I, I I had a pleasure meeting Todd a few times too. And yeah, anytime that guy says anything, I'm like, I'm gonna listen because <laughs> there there's things like I don't know about like business wise for the industry or something I might not know even editing wise or like what to look for in in a, a style of art that I might not personally like but still see the value in it. And Todd's really good at that kind of feedback too. So and he he passed some of that on to me when I met him and. I'm like, dude, I'm just like, I can't thank you enough. Like, you're amazing. Um, well, that's cool, man. Well, I hope all of those, you know, come true. And it sounds like you're on your way. It sounds like uh, your your mindset is just. Well, first of all, you sound like Peter Parker. You're like, I'm just grateful to be here, <laughs> and I'm grateful to do what I do. And that's that's awesome, man. And and that's why I wanted to have you on the show so other people that follow me could see that, especially since we have a Spider-Man audience that comes and checks this show out. So I hope someone out there sees this and, and sees your passion and sees your talent that has, didn't know of you before and starts, you know, you know, knowing more about you now. So please, everyone, I'm going to put a link again down below to Pink Lemonade Volume 1. Please pick it up and buy it. It's amazing. It's really awesome. And then I'm also going to put a link to Nick's, uh, uh, you know, his Instagram, his socials down below, and then the Amazing Spider Talk podcast where you can see more of his work and the thumbnails. And before we go, Nick, I just want to hand the floor over to you. Any last things you want to say, anything else you want to plug uh, before we call it a day today? Um, not that I can think of. I mean, other than just uh, saying a little bit more of uh, my, my venom, my early venom memories. I, uh, yeah. I, I remember having some toys from the late nineties. Like that was some early, early uh, introduction there. Like they, they, they put out those, those big talking guys, like yeah. Spider-Man and the Venom. Uh -huh. I had like the, the, the reissue versions of those. Uh, they, they always uh, stood out in my head. And uh, I, I, I remember like the PS1 game back in the day was a big early one too. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, one of the earliest single issues that I, that I got was, uh, it was a back issue, like pretty recent at the time. And it was from the, uh, the, Howard Mackey, uh, John Romita Jr. That, that ran that reboot era. And oh, yeah. it was uh, number nine of Peter Parker's Spider-Man. It just had like the big floppy symbiote on the cover. Uh, that was a, that was like a really early, early issue right there for me. Just uh, I always, always love that kind of stuff. That's awesome. I um, tragically don't have any memories of my first time with the character. But my mom said, she was like, when you were in, you know, she was telling me when I was in middle school and high school, I was a huge fan of the character. And she said, typically, if I drew, I was sketching in like a sketchbook, she was like, 
you pretty much drew venom and she and i at first i was like really and and then she showed me a like she, we found some of my old sketchbooks and she showed me and i'm like holy crap it was like a sketchbook that had like 100 pages in it and i think 30 of the pages were venom <laughs> so, and like different cool. versions of them like you know ones that looked a little bit more like scotty youngish you know uh some that looked more mcfarlane-ish without the tongue and there's like a wide range of him and i'm like man i would like i would kill to be able to do that nowadays uh <laughs> But that's uh, but th but that's why I think part of me likes doing the show and and uh, and why I'm branching out and doing the Parasite podcast so I can meet other people like you who also love the character and and love Spider Man. So I can't thank you enough for your time today, man. I really appreciate it. And again, everyone, all of those links down below so you can uh, keep up with Nick and the amazing work that I know deep in my heart he's going to create for the rest of his life. This guy's so talented. So Nick, thanks for your time today, man. And we'll uh, we'll catch you later, hopefully. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It was it was really fun. Awesome, man. And thank you. And everyone else out there watching, thanks so much for you watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you in the future. Peace.